So nobody loves me, yeah. Nobody seems to care. Nobody loves me, nobody. Nobody seems to care. Speak of bad luck and trouble. You know I have had my share. Let me hear. The Juno Project is a mission to Jupiter that was launched in 2011 and that is flying toward Jupiter right now at the beginning of 2016 and it will reach Jupiter later this year. We'll model the Juno trajectory in this video. But first we want to revisit the Apollo Project to make a couple of observations and to pick up some programming tips. The top graph shows the Apollo rocket orbiting the moon graphed using the Earth-centered coordinates we use for the model and for the computations. But how does the rocket look as seen from the moon? We can plot the rocket's orbit around the moon in moon-centered coordinates and that graph is shown below. How did we do it? Well, it wasn't, wasn't difficult. MATLAB was designed to make array manipulations easy so arrays can be combined as they're done in this plot statement where we subtract the moon coordinates from the rocket coordinates and we get the rocket as seen from the moon. Note that this is a sort of programming trick that's possible in MATLAB but isn't possible in most languages and we don't use any programming tricks at all when we're doing the computations but when it comes to plotting the graphs all options are on the table. The graph on the left shows the rocket with no guidance boost just missing the moon and note how the moon's gravity whips the rocket around as it passes by. We can plot the total velocity of the rocket as it passes the moon as shown in the graph to the right and we can see that the rocket's velocity is significantly higher as a result of the flyby. This is called the slingshot effect and it is used in all missions to the outer planets including the Juno mission as we will see. Note that the MATLAB statement that generates the graph again is a sort of MATLAB shorthand and is not typical of other languages. The Juno probe does a flyby of Earth two years into the flight. So let's have a look at this trajectory. This is a NASA simulation. It was launched to August 2011 from Earth. And now Juno is going on a two-year orbit around the Sun. So the Earth's gone around the Sun once. There's a maneuver executed about one year into the flight. Juno comes back to Earth, trailing it slightly. And then the slingshot effect accelerates Juno toward Jupiter and the flight takes three more years to reach Jupiter. And at this point Juno goes into orbit around Jupiter. The Juno trajectory is similar to the Apollo trajectory we have just programmed in the previous project in that the rocket is launched and there is a long phase of unpowered, unguided flight, then there is a brief guidance maneuver followed by more unpowered, unguided flight, and that's it. So the basic structure of the Juno program will be identical to that of the Apollo program. The first problem is to get the rocket into a two-year orbit around the Sun. We can start with the Earth around the Sun orbit simulation and use this code without modification to generate the Earth's trajectory. We just need to add the code for the rocket model. In the actual mission, the Juno probe and a Centaur booster are placed into orbit around the Earth. And the Centaur is launched from its Earth orbit to put the probe into a two-year orbit around the Sun. 
Our first problem is to get the probe into the two-year orbit. We'll launch both the Earth and the Centaur rocket from the x-axis. The initial coordinates of the Earth are the x-coordinate is the radius of the Earth orbit, and the y-coordinate is zero, and the initial Earth velocity in the x-direction is zero, and in the y-direction, the velocity of the Earth orbit. The rocket will also be launched from the x-axis with initial position, the x position is the radius of the Earth orbit plus the radius of the space station orbit, and with an initial velocity calculated as the Earth's orbit velocity plus the space station's orbit velocity plus the launch velocity of the Centaur rocket, which is to be determined. We determine the rocket launch velocity by trial and error. If the Earth were not in the simulation, we would launch the rocket with a y velocity only and increase it until a two-year orbit is achieved. However, immediately after the rocket is launched, Earth's gravity pulls it toward Earth, and this disrupts the rocket's trajectory, and it is necessary to give the rocket a positive x velocity to counter the effects of Earth's gravity. Thus, it is necessary to determine both the x and y components of the rocket launch velocity by trial and error to produce a two-year orbit around the Sun. Once a two-year orbit is achieved, all that remains is to determine the guidance boost. The guidance maneuver happens about one year into the flight, and it collapses the probe orbit just a bit so that it returns to Earth more quickly and at an angle to the Earth's trajectory, which is necessary for the slingshot effect. All that's needed is to determine the boost start time, the boost end time, and the amount of boost to apply. The code for the guidance boost is shown. We use our usual method to determine flight parameters, trial and error. The primary problem of the assignment is determining the guidance boost parameters, and that will be aided if we keep track of the minimum distance between the rocket and the Earth. So we add a little code to do that. We initialize the minimum distance when we do the guidance maneuver, because we don't want to initialize before that. And then following the guidance maneuver, whenever we calculate the distance between the Earth and the Moon, we update the minimum distance if the calculated distance is less than the minimum distance thus far. And we also keep track of the time index so that we can graph the trajectory near the point of closest contact. Then, after the program has run, we can use this code shown at the bottom to graph the trajectory near the point of closest contact. That'll aid us in adjusting the guidance parameters to get the slingshot working. The code at the bottom of the page shows how the graph is generated. Note that you can copy these lines to the command window and execute them from there and vary the parameters in the command window and re-execute them to focus on the section of the trajectory you want to examine. So, let's see how it works. The top graph shows the Earth's trajectory in blue and the rocket's trajectory in red around the point of closest approach and we can see that since the rocket is behind the Earth, the rocket got there too late. So we need to adjust our boost parameters to get the rocket to the Earth's orbit sooner. We do that and we get the graph at the bottom of the page and we see that now the rocket trajectory in red is ahead of the Earth's trajectory in blue. So this time the rocket got there too soon. So we can adjust the parameters the other way. This time the results are encouraging, so we modify our index limits and print the graph stopping right at the point of closest approach, and it still looks pretty good. Now we'll switch to a longer view to see if we're getting the slingshot effect. And lo and behold, we did get a slight slingshot. 
So we continue to tweak the parameters going for a stronger slingshot effect, and we get the graph at the bottom. We're not actually going to try to hit Jupiter. We're satisfied just getting a strong slingshot. So that's it. The assignment is to get the Juno sim running and the code outline follows. But first I want you to see something else. This is an animation of the trajectories of Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. For NASA this was too good an opportunity to miss. They announced a mission to the Giants, called Voyager. It marked a new era for astronomers who had struggled to understand the hazy views they could see through Earth-based telescopes. The mission designer for the Voyager missions and many other probes to the outer planets was Charles Cole Hayes, who works for the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. And he has a series of four lectures on the design of gravity assist trajectories that can be seen online, and links are provided in the class notes. These lectures are not to be missed. You know it's the way to lose So nobody loves me Nobody seems to care Nobody loves me, nobody Nobody seems to care Speak of bad luck and trouble You know I have had my share Let me hear it, did it, did it. 